In this third example of using the inverse norm, we have a problem uh, like this. The weights of a large population of Atlantic cod are known to be normally distributed. The mean and standard deviation are not known. A large sample was taken, so we're assuming it was large enough, uh, and it was found that 5% weighed less than 8.32 kilos and 4% weighed more than 11.38 kilos. Estimate the mean and standard deviation using this. So, if we draw ourselves a little diagram just to see exactly what's going on here, there is this unknown mean, but we know that at 8.32, this would be 5% of the population. And at 11.38, this would be 4% of the population. Okay? Now we also have, remember our formula, Z is equal to X minus the mean over the standard deviation. So, if we look at finding the inverse norm of 5%, so 0 0.05, okay, so we do that on the calculator, uh, which I'll show you now. Here we need the bottom 5%, so that as a decimal is 0 0.05, and so we want to find the inverse norm of 0 0.05. So we go into second, into the distributions, VARS, go down to inverse norm, 0 0.05, close the bracket, press enter, so our Z statistic is minus 1.644853626. So we got... Uh, minus 1.6449, I'm going to do it to four decimal places here, and we're going to do the inverse norm of uh, the 4%, but we're going to do 0 0.96, because it's always looking to the left, okay, so I'll show you how to do that now. We want to find the top uh, 4%, so... In order to do that, we are going to find the uh, bottom 96%. So we're going to do the inverse norm of 0 0.96. So we're going to second, then VARS for distributions. Oh, I'm in the wrong bit. One moment. Quit that. Let's try that again. So second, and then VARS into the distributions. Go down to inverse norm, 0 0.96. And this is the Z value that we want, 1.75068607.1. We've got 1.7507 to four decimal places there. So that now allows us to write down two equations. Substituting in, we've got minus 1.6449 is equal to X, which is 8.32, take away the mean over the standard deviation. So if we multiply both sides by the standard deviation, then that means, and rearrange it, that means we can write the mean, so multiplying by the standard deviation, and then subtracting from both sides, as 8.32 plus 1.6449 sigma. So it can be reorganised that way. That's the first equation. The second equation, by from substituting in this one, so we've got 1.7507, is equal to 11.38, take away the mean over the standard deviation. So if I reorder this one, we're going to have the mean is equal to 11.38, take away 1.7507 times sigma. So that's equation two. So now what we can do is we can do equation, uh, let's do equation one, take away equation two. So equation, equation one, take away equation two. We're going to have mu take away mu, so we're going to have zero. We've got 8.32 take away 
0.38, so that's minus 3.06, and then we've got this, take away this, so 1.6449, uh, take away a minus, so plus 1.7507, is 3.3956 sigma. So if you add 3.06 to both sides and divide by 3.3956, so 3.06 divided by 3.3956 gets you 0 0.901 to three significant figures. And now if I plug that value into one of the two equations, either 1 or 2, so I'm going to substitute into number 1, so 8.32 plus 1.6449 times the sigma is equal to 9.80 to three significant figures. So we would have a mean of 9.80 uh, kilos and we would have a standard deviation of 0.901 kilos.